All right, creators, official updates from the creators of YouTube to YouTube creators. Let's get into this week's newsflash. First up, let's talk video traffic sources. Now, Video Analytics has added a new part in the overview that is gonna show you where viewers are finding your video. They're also gonna highlight what's underperforming and what's overperforming. Now, small print, if you see a dash or no indicators, in terms of your performance, that's an indicator that we do not have enough historic data from that traffic source. We're also trying to make it a little bit clearer which surfaces are coming from YouTube recommending your content. So that's home and video suggested to watch up next. Keep in mind, it's really normal for viewers to find your video in different ways in different places. So it's very common for you to see a couple of different traffic sources mixed up in terms of this traffic source report. When a video performs really well from a certain traffic source, it may get fewer views or impressions on others. For example, if lots of viewers see a video on home, it may get fewer impressions on suggested and search because those viewers have already been offered the video elsewhere. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or as usual, send us some feedback through the feedback link. Next up, we have an awesome promotion that impacts YouTube premium members and channel memberships as well. From now until the 31st of December, 2020, a couple of randomly selected users from Great Britain, Ireland, Brazil, Korea, Japan will receive one free non-recurring membership up to $4.99 if they are either a current YouTube premium member or if they sign up and become a new YouTube premium subscriber. This offer will be promoted to eligible viewers on your channel memberships offer screen. More information in the description below if you need to read up on it. Next up, awesome updates about mobile and the app mention functionality. What's new? Well, creators will be able to app mention from Studio uh, and the main app as well as desktop. This applies to new app mentions or the editing of app mentions in existing content. Next up, we have a really cool experiment and this is about time stamping your comments. What viewers who are part of the experiment are gonna experience is an icon which will pop up and you will be able to insert the timestamp into the comment rather than having to do it manually. Sounds good, right? Next up, we have another experiment. So this one is India only at the outset. So for everybody who watches this channel in India, we really need your feedback. What we're doing is adding a shorts video to the explore page where somebody can view the featured short and then go on and explore more shorts and see even more great content. Now, what is staying the same? Well, creators and artists on the rise are still gonna be found in the exact same place, still gonna be available, as well as the easy access to trending and other destinations such as fashion, gaming, news. Right, next up, we have yet another experiment fresh from the lab. So this one's about chapters and titles. So previously we had introduced this experiment where you can add, basically split your video into its component parts and give each component part a relevant timestamp and a description or title. Now in your description, what that involved was making sure that you're listing what the timestamp is and the title of each chapter. What we're doing is testing out automatic chapters. So what this will do is use machine learning to identify text within your video and pull that text into a chapter title. Sounds cool, right? So we're testing this out with a very small group of viewers and videos. And from the viewer perspective, what's going to happen is a small button will pop up within the player and they will have the option to go to a specific chapter. Now, those specific chapters that the viewer, as part of this experiment, is going to see are those automated chapters. That's the machine learning at work. However, what trumps that is videos which already have those manually inputted titles and chapters and timestamps. Nothing is going to happen to those. They're going to remain exactly as the same as they are right now. Now, this is not a full launch. It's only a couple of videos, a couple of viewers. If 
you want to opt out, which I'm sure a very small minority of you will. There are details in the description below. All right, this video is tiring me out. And that's why I'm taking a brief pause, handing it over to Mac, who's gonna give you some great updates about Audio Library and the new ability to add or replace audio directly in studio. Take it away, Mac. Thank you, Connor. What's up, Insiders? It's Mac here. First update I have for you guys is we're on our YouTube Audio Library. And I think most of you know what this feature is. If you don't, it is a collection of thousands of free songs that we make available to you, free to use in your videos, so you don't have to worry about copyright claims, and you can monetize those videos if you're eligible. And I just want to announce that we fully launched this in YouTube Studio. So that means you can find your favorite sound effects, you can find tracks licensed under Creative Commons, and we made this a lot easier for you to do. We've also improved the filtering so you can really drill down on the best tracks for your videos. Uh, we also brought back the start tracks feature, and now I'm gonna show you how this looks in YouTube Studio. So you can access the audio library, the left nav of your YouTube Studio as seen here. And immediately you can see that there's three tabs at the top. First one is free music. So this is your general production music. Then we have sound effects, things like kids playing, people cheering, class breaking. And the last half we have here is start. So this is where you can keep track of your favorite tracks from the audio library that you've come across. So you can see I have four here, which I've all starred. So if we go back to the free music tab, See, there's multiple columns here, one for genre, mood, artist, and so on. And each of these columns are filterable. So you filter here, genre, let's choose classical. Uh, you can also choose filter by mood. Do that there, see how that works. Exit out of that. You can also filter in the column itself. Uh, so if I click here, all the songs listed here are now made by this artist that I've filtered for. And you can see we've added a link here that takes you to the artist's YouTube channel page, which is pretty cool. And I do want to call out a filter here called Attribution Required. So I sort of talked about this, but these are songs under a Creative Commons license. Uh, so they're free for you to use as long as you provide attribution in your video description. So we have this column called license type. And if you hover over this, basically the information I just talked about, and if you click on view details, we provide you with all the information you need to include in your video description in order to meet that attribution requirement. So all you have to do is click copy here and paste that in your video description. Exit out of that. And if you want to download the song to edit offline, you can click download here in the added column, or you can download in the player itself. And now you can also add tracks from Audio Library directly into your videos from our YouTube editor. And so that brings me to our second update, which is around our add or replace audio feature. So this is what I just talked about. We're here in the YouTube editor. If you click add a track, it brings up the Audio Library. You can add a song here, it shows up in your video editing timeline. And we've added the ability for you to see the waveform of the track, which is pretty cool, as seen here. If you click here, you can adjust the mix level of the audio. A big improvement is that we've added the ability for you to add multiple tracks to your video. This feature also allows you to swap out any claimed songs from your videos with tracks from our audio library. And once you successfully swap out those claimed songs, those associated claims get automatically released and the applied restrictions also get removed from your video as well. We know these tools are really important to you guys. We're always looking to improve them. So if you have any feedback, leave it in the comments down below or you can leave it directly in products. We'll definitely take a look. And yeah, that's it. Catch you guys later. My God, you've done it. You're at the end of the video and you're here for one of those trivia questions asked by you, the creators, and answered by us. So, 411 now asks, what is discussions of modern acts of terror, events resulting in a catastrophic loss of human life, or controversial social issues in the context of a historical event that took place over 100 years ago? Really good question. Now, let's give some background and pedal back. What 411 is asking about is one of the options within self-certification. 
this is driven by the advertiser friendly guidelines. So this is the type of language that we're trying to use to indicate stuff that is definitely not okay to run ads. But as ever, we can always do better with the way in which we're communicating it. So let's break it down into its component parts. Discussion of modern acts of terror. What we're talking about here is stuff like 9-11, for example, um, and definitely any modern acts of terror that happened after that time. When it comes to stuff that's older than that time, it's really about the context in which you present it. So let's not even go 100 years in the past. Let's go to Tiananmen Square. If you're providing footage of that, which we would definitely consider non-monetizable if it were to happen tomorrow, if you're showing some of that footage of a man standing in front of a tank and discussing the context in which that extremely historic event happened, then that is something that can monetize. Now, what's important when you're thinking about this 100 years ago vector is what other advertiser-friendly guidelines might you be in violation of. So, if we're looking at a terrorist attack that happened 100 years ago, more than likely gonna be monetizable if it's in a documentary or historical context, you're presenting it in a really dispassionate way that's really objective and informative. However, if you're including footage that is really violent, you really need to take a look at those violence guidelines within the advertiser-friendly guidelines and the options within self-certification. Hope we've given you a good snapshot. 411 now, please uh, follow up with another comment if that wasn't clear, uh, but we hope it is. Next week's trivia winner is gonna be the next person that asks a question about anything that we've brought up here today or anything that they've just wondered about on YouTube. We're gonna get you those answers. Thanks so much, tune in next time.